Now let's work an example using our equations of motion. Let's imagine a top spinning around at a thousand revolutions per minute, which eventually, sitting there on the table, slows down to a stop. Three minutes later, it stopped, and we can ask the question that if we assume that the acceleration, the angular acceleration of alpha is constant, what is the value of that alpha? Furthermore, how many revolutions will the top go through during this time that it's slowing down? To solve these two questions, we need to first remember that our equations of motion are always best to cast in terms of radians. So even though we've given the, the angular velocity, the initial angular velocity of the top in revolutions per minute, we have to convert over a radians per second or else we just get ourselves in trouble. Our omega naught in this case is a thousand revolutions per minute. So we're going to write it that way just because we want to go back and do that kind of stoichiometry calculation that we were used to. We know that there's two pi radians for every revolution, and this way we can get the revolutions to cancel out, and we'll have radians in the numerator. We also know that there's one minute for every 60 seconds, and so if we cast it that way, we'll get minutes to uh, cancel out in the ratio. And when we multiply it all the way through, we get 100 pi over 3 radians per second is our initial angular velocity. That's perfect, because that's the kind of units that we need to work in all the time. We have to remember, the first impulse in, in doing these problems is to convert to units that we know we have to use. Now we can actually solve the first of the two questions. We can ask what is the angular uh, velocity at the end and what's the angular velocity at the beginning and we can use that to solve for what alpha is. We remember that omega final is equal to omega naught plus alpha t. That's just like the linear motion case. In this case, omega final is zero, and omega naught was that number we just calculated before. That allows us to solve for alpha. Alpha is equal to minus omega naught over t. If we put in the numbers that we know, 100 pi over 3 and 180 seconds for 3 minutes, we get alpha is minus 0.58 radians per second squared. Notice that alpha is negative, and that corresponds very well with our intuition, because when alpha is greater than zero, omega should be increasing in magnitude. When alpha is less than zero, then omega should be decreasing. So we have to always remember what, what the sign of the acceleration means. As for the second of the two equations, or the second of two problems that we're supposed to solve here, we have to remember the other equations that we know, and that is that theta naught plus omega naught t plus one half alpha t squared equals theta. And that theta is what we want to learn. So here we can put in some initial values. We, if we say that we were initially at theta naught of zero, and we put in our values for omega naught and alpha and t, we come up with theta is approximately 9,453 radians. And if we remember that 2 pi radians is approximately one revolution, this means that the top has, rev has spun through about 1,500 revolutions in the time it took to slow down.